Cut the Check podcast brought to you by Craft Farmer, bringing you weekly motivation, unmatched cultivation tech, and telling you some badass war stories along the way. Man, welcome to another show with Craft Farmer, Cut the Check. I've got a very, 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 very special friend here today. This one's going to be easy. <laughs> Just two homeboys talking. I have the man, the myth, the legend, Ian, at Uncle Dad Vibes from IG, phenomenal human being. Great cultivator, great spiritual leader. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, just fucking uh, badass friends. Thanks for having me, dude. I really appreciate you. Dude, thank you for taking the time out of your crazy schedule with all your facilities and all the crazy shit that <clears throat> we do together. And man, that doesn't even count family time or personal it's, time. It's or it's like you, you know how it is. It's the only way we know. It's whenever there's t- free time, it's time to be filled. I, f- I feel like, you know, for you, you have almost like the right tools going into this because you come from the kitchen industry, right? Yeah. Yeah. I came from it was chaos like chaos and, and yeah. ingredients and heat and yeah, you got you have the structure at a time, make, make sure it's all set up. And then you're like going into the battle and then you got to like just make it through. And that's my favorite time is like the more intensity, right. the, the more fun it when is. When did you get into the restaurant industry, and how did you um, go about doing that? Well, it was, like, early on, I always I always liked it. I was, like, cooking. Um, I worked, like, as early soon as on, I could. like, high like, school? Like, when I was, like, when I was in middle school. Before I was legally mm-hmm. allowed to work in Iowa, I would go work, like, at a <laughs> little pizza place. There was, a co- like, a co-op style spot that I got to do a little food prep, and I loved that. I was, like, dumb, just, like learning how to chop vegetables different ways. Yeah. I was, like, it was cool to me. The and correct then, like, way, like yeah. super tech on the right way to cut things and exactly everything. Like the little things, and it was all new because I, just, you know, there's you don't have YouTube, but you didn't. Have, there's like the cooking channels weren't the same thing. Right. Like, but even like the little bit of cooking shows you could watch, I was into that. And then, uh, so I always liked it at that point. But then uh, I went to school, started going to University of Iowa, and I dropped out within a month and just sold weed instead. Were you just like knew right away that? This wasn't going to be the vibe. Yeah. Oh, dude. My, my orientation. So I came from, I, went, I grew up in a little Because you're hi- excited town. going to it, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I was from this like little hippie town where we all knew each other f- since we were like five years old. And then I went to the orientation for University of Iowa and I sat in the circle. Like they broke us off into groups. And there was like 12 of us in a group. And there were like three dudes with Dave Matthews Band's t-shirts and like talking about chugging pitchers of beer. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like a little stoner and I had like green hair and... I was like, this is not really the scene. And then I started go- trying to go to the classes and I would have like super bad anxiety. Like one of the class, the first class I dropped was because I couldn't find it on campus and I was a few minutes late and I didn't want to walk in the room and have everyone look at me. So I was like dropping that class. And then the yeah. next one I did was like a math class. And in high school, I'd done like pretty advanced math, but we did um, for whatever reason, we did like long form everything, like no cal- no calculators allowed. So we'd do like, 30 page math problems and I didn't even know how to use a T T83 or whatever. Right. So I got to that like advanced math class that they, that I got put in and all of a sudden like I just couldn't do it without the calculator. And I was like too embarrassed to say like, I don't know how to use this graphing calculator. So mm-hmm. I was like, drop that. And meanwhile I was like getting, you know, QPs, uh, fronted from my brother's friend and I was like slinging those and like on campus. Yeah. That turned out to be way better of a move for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you're seeing you're seeing direct movement right away, and, and yeah. yeah, I'm like I could do this and have fun and like keep seeing my friends, or I can go to some weird basic class that they're forcing me to take, and they're gonna oh, write write an essay about a memory you have. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, right. This is not like my brain is very squirrely. Like I need a lot of stimulation, a lot of things right. going on at the same time, and it just wasn't really it's didn't feel like the right move challenging to sit through a class the whole time and just concentrate and take all that information in and yeah very challenging for slow and obvious stuff especially like the prerequisites that they make you take just like how many years until i get to do something that i actually want to do so i dropped out of that and actually ended up going to school for audio engineering in la i I packed up my little two car or two-door car my little honda crx with all my shit what year was the crx it was in 1991. Dude, those things were bad. Yeah. Those are like little fucking flying eggs. Yeah, it was. <laughs> you know what I mean? I had seven people hotboxing at one time, but... Um, For those of you that don't know, 
That's literally two captain chairs <laughs> and a mini bench, and that's and the like car. a little lift. That, yeah, a little lift in the back that kind of has like room for a tool or two. When you open the hatch, it's like ten inches deep. Yeah, you could. Good luck getting a fucking paper bag in there. Sideways. I love that thing. Yeah, I got seven people in there smoking. I had before. a uh, eighty-four Honda Civic. Nice hatchback. Oh yeah, Dude, I, I still love that car. car. Thought- it went from me to Owen back to back to me. And then got fucking stolen in front of Custom Car Audio in the middle of the day. Damn. I'll tell you that fucking Someone story later that. today. <laughs> I like literally got up to the car like when they got it running and mm-hmm. like they started to take off and I was holding onto the wing and they were like dragging my feet Shit. and I was 18 years old and I'm holding on to my fucking 84 Honda Civic with like 340,000 miles on it and these two dudes had <laughs> stolen it and one's like over his shoulder staring at me the whole time while the driver's like going and I'm holding on to the wing and like he's getting onto the on-ramp of the 101 and I'm like, dude, I can't just keep holding I, I on. Like so I feel like every encounter you have ever told, told me involves like the most extreme version of that encounter. And it's, and it's <laughs> like, always not like, only did my car get jacked, but fuck. I was holding on to the wing of my 84. And that's and that's partially because of my own stupidity and not, oh, shit, I'm getting robbed. He's got a fucking gun. Maybe I should just let this go. Yeah. No. No, no, that's not your personality. Boom. Then it's yeah. like, oh, I'm taking your car, bitch. No, you're not. OK, let me get drug onto the freeway 30 miles. Yeah. Like, it's just bad decisions. Unfortunately, can't let him, can't let my, him just take my it. end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're going to watch him and be like, hey, I get you. Go for it, guys. Dude, I'm yeah. I'm just so fucking glad I made it through everything because now I'm just like at peace with like everything in life. Yeah, and you don't have anything to prove once you've already gone through all those things and you, you know you can do it. Just ready to deal with anything we have to. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I, I went college. to audio engineering school in L.A. And, How did that uh, move come come about? I, mean, that's um, a I just didn't know what to do at all. And we were, I was talking How to my dad. How did you even think L.A. and just to fucking audio engineering? Like, I mean, I, I, I loved music. I was obsessed with music. I, I lived in Iowa, so we would drive like anywhere from like an hour at least to go to the closest show in Iowa City. And then we would drive up to 10 hours away to go see shows like. To go like 10 hours each way. To cities. To like Minneapolis, Detroit, Chicago, St. Louis. Sick. Wherever to go see. To go see Atmosphere in Minneapolis. Or just like go see weird underground hip hop in different uh, Midwest cities. So I always loved music and I was just trying to think. I was just like kind of lost. So like I can't just like sell weed and i wasn't even good at selling weed you know i was like i would sell enough for my friends and i to smoke and right. and a little bit less than that you know like <laughs> just make it cheaper for us to smoke right um so uh my dad and i were talking and he mentioned like these schools that they do you know audio engineering and production i was like that sounds awesome like i like making music i like yeah. making like beats and stuff like that at the time so packed up and went out there and i uh, went to this like kind of like a burner school you know i think it was probably gone the year after i had finished going there <laughs> it was like a few a few thousand bucks to go and uh my i worked at a recording studio for a couple of years as like oh so they had like a like right out of it you got a job or they did yeah like i had a friend from the school that was working at a studio and it was a studio that i really wanted to work at at the time so there were like a couple of major studios for like hip-hop and r&b at the time they're like larabee and then soundcastle is the one i worked at and like just all these people that I, all these musicians that I could only like dream of uh, before that would be like pretty regular guests, you know, wow. like. Um, and you're working on like it's like old old fashioned. Shit. And I was working on like the bitch boy stuff. Like I was running, running errands, ordering food. I would sometimes get into the sessions and like patch cables. I would set up mics. I rent mics, rent equipment. Like got it. My goal was to go to the assistant engineer and then eventually be an engineer. And uh, I loved it. Like I would work. I was on call twenty four hours a day. Wow. I worked no overtime pay. Not 80, 90 hours a week. Six bucks an hour, five fifty an hour or something. I lived in the corner of a living room that my friends had in Sherman Oaks, and I had like sheets tacked on the wall. And all I, I couldn't make plans. I'd be like, I can't go to the beach. I might get a call. I, I didn't even have a call. I had a pager. You know. Wow. So uh, <laughs> anytime you get a page, you just go right to the studio. Just gotta go to the studio. Crazy. And like between there and there, it's like. No cell phone, no Navi. You know, I had a Howard's guide, Tom Thomas guide, Thomas oh, guide, 
and like pr- maybe have some map quest directions like written out on my hand if I was lucky, you know, and then like trying to run errands and sit in a city like LA. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty, it was wild in the Honda CRX. Wow. <laughs> um, but I, and I loved it. I learned a lot from it. I mean, I learned how to work hard. I had some like super obsessive, like talk about kooks, like growers that are kooks, yeah. like the master, the head master engineers. Oh, I like bet. real kooks. I bet. Like the industry, a lot of them just, a lot of them hated what they did. And that was eventually the thing that kind of deterred me was I would talk to the ones that I looked up to the most and I would t- kind of like sneak in a conversation here and there. And I'd be like, so like, what do you listen to on the way home? Like what kind of sound, like what's like some of the process when you're like, you can't just listen to right. this million dollar studio. And they'd be like, I don't listen to music on the way home. Okay. Like I don't listen to music at all anymore. I'm like, whoa. Oh, shit. Okay. And then I was like, I think I'm good on this. That's why. Yeah. And uh, I was like, I love me. That was like my favorite thing was music. So I'm like, I, I should probably kind of work my way out of this. So that immediately made you think think that? like when Yeah, it did. Like- as far as like trying to do it professionally and like enduring it. Like I was ready to do whatever it took. So like the day I went to apply at the place, like to convince the dude that I would do whatever, I, was, I went outside and I mowed the mowed the lawn of the place. Like, in the clothes, I was just, like, there doing the interview. I was like, I'll go fucking mow the lawn right now, dude. What do you, what do you need me to do? You want me to sweep up stuff? You want me to clean windows? Like, I want to <laughs> work here, ass. you know? And I think that's missing in a lot of, Bro, are you a lot of people me? these that's days. everything. Like, I still do have that same shit. I, I pick a place where I want to work usually, and then I'll, I've gotten better about the way that I, am, right. like, nag them, but... I try to tell people, like, you're not gonna just going to send me, out emails and get a job. For sure. Someone was saying that to me the other day. Oh, what do you think about this person or or that person? It's like, no one's really, like, showing me that they really want it. Like, yeah. I want to see that. I want to see, like, you want that that job or, like, look at what I can do. Like, yeah. it's gone, I feel let like. Let me, I'll work for free, dude. Show me, let me do it for free for a while. Like, like, get me, give me the job. With, uh, like, anyways, back to that. So I, I stopped that and I decided I would just do it for free for friends. You know, that's kind of like my, my style of things. If I want to do something, I want to do it passionately right. and I'd rather do it for free or give it away and still love it. Right. So I had all, I had all the equipment to do. I, could, I would go to bands, practice spaces. I would record them. They'd give me beer or whatever. You know, I had a little spot in my basement. I would let people come record and like it's hard to find people that were dependable and reliable. Right. So I like would practice trying to learn enough of each instrument that I could just make some shit myself and add to them or like make a beat or just or make something my like own that. stuff, make my own beats uh, or like, or even add with other people like collabs that, <laughs> that so they didn't cool. know about, you know, it's like, um, remix. Yeah. And then all my shit got stolen out of Oakland from oh. a U-Haul. So I took that as a sign. I'm like, no uh, way. Yeah. Cause I was moving to San Francisco. I was, had been living in Miami. I'm all over all the map. All over. Yeah. Fucking amazing. There's a lot of gap fillers there, but I mean, I, uh, I was going to move to San Francisco and I was like keeping the U-Haul at my buddy's house in Oakland and taking loads over in my truck like each day. And then the U-Haul just got jacked. Fuck, the whole thing by taken? By U-Haul. Yeah. Oh, really? They said it was abandoned and my buddy had said it was locked that morning when my buddy saw it. And so they picked it up and they took it there. They said it had been abandoned. They found it open. And I got to the U-Haul place. The guy's like, yeah, you can see uh, like the dew marks from it being open all night. I was like, oh, interesting. Oh, really? Cool, yeah. And I hit, talked to my brother, who's a lawyer. And he's like, yeah, you're, they're so protected. You can't do anything. Oh, U-Haul's protected? Yeah. Yeah, shout out to U-Haul. Oh, because they took, yeah. you think they stole your shit? Yeah. 100%. Dude, you, you can just feel when someone's just like straight up. Bro, you hold when he you He told go me he there. saw the dew from the door being open the night before. And my friend said it was locked that morning when he left for work. I'm like, oh, the, the dew line, you know. Bro, the U Haul has like the most tweaker looking <laughs> fucking employees out of anything uh, anymore. Yeah. I mean, Dude, I've gotten lucky, but like my buddy Chris, <laughs> my buddy Chris has moved like four times. And every time he's like made the appointment a month in advance and they call him the day he's <laughs> moving or when he goes to get his truck the day before, they're like, we don't have a truck for you every <laughs> fucking time. They're like, dude, we got this van. He's like, T- I had the 40 foot fucking enclosed V20. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm going to Arizona. You guys have an inventory. You guys have a spreadsheet Nothing. somewhere you can look at. They're- is, there's locations and, and they're, like, get, they're always like just like what, you want a box like what yeah. do you want us to do you got this thing like you want some extra blankets <laughs> you uh, uh, dude so then what? I went to, I went into restaurants and I got back into that and I love cooking I love kitchens I love like 
the grind of it. I love the satisfaction of like, I like the, the every step of it. Like I like the, the the careful preparation. I like the fucking insanity, and then I love afterwards like the satisfaction of getting through it. What's your your ethnicity of choice? Like your style. <laughs> uh, my favorite of cuisine, um, dude. I to like prepare. anything. Honestly, I. I so I'm, I've, never, this, I've never been like a chef. I've ne- not a chef, you know. Like I'm just, a, but I'll work lines. And if someone shows me how to do something, like I'm, I'll get. I like to get down, you know. It's like not a. We're not master growers. I just like so to grow weed. You and cook something right now. We go get the ingredients. Um, I like a lot of like South American, okay. Central American stuff. I like a lot of like sweet plus savory. I like a lot of. Uh, you know, I'm not like classically trained in anything. I, I did try to work at as many different types of restaurants as I could, to see. All the different, different ways, styles. all the different styles. I worked at every position I could. I would watch, like, I'd watch each person at each place and see how they did it. Like, studying, a, you learn a lot from a dishwasher at a spot. Right. You know? like, at most places, when I either took over and ended up managing, most of the time, the people that I ended up having running, like, my lines were the people that were my most badass dishwashers. That's I'm like sick. that dude versus that guy that just got out of culinary school that's wearing the purple bandana watched too much fucking <laughs> uh, f- final chef or whatever like that guy no give me the dude that just shows me how bad he grinds and like how right. organized his his dry dishes are like that's the one I want on the line I started a I started in a restaurant when I was really young I think I was 14 years old something like that it was my second job and it was at the Wallala hotel and i fucking loved it dude the hotel was built in like 18 something super nostalgic like civil war looking fucking hotel right down in Wallala. had a an amazing bar that was the original redwood like that was taken down in an old growth tree and I like the, the the glass front or like the refrigerator style uh, cupboards and stuff like that. Just really the, old the school bar, all dark, wooden. all redwood floors. That's and awesome. It, it was really cool. I mean, I saw some badass shit happen in that bar like <laughs> over those years. I mean, we're talking, we're talking way out in the woods, loggers. Like oh, these wow. are fucking men's men. Yeah. Like who are drinking at this bar. This isn't that pussy shit you see now when you walk into any bar in the city and <laughs> everyone's wearing fucking sixty thousand dollar watches and yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Like these are fucking men's men. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like just different time and and I started I first I started uh waiting tables and then I was like, dude, I want to be in the kitchen. Yeah. You know? And then I was dishwashing. And I'll never forget Dude, when I, I got my dishwashing. first when I got my first opportunity <laughs> to be um, the bar cook and the second to the chef, the oh, sous yeah. chef. Dude. That was so fucking it's fun, so fun, dude. Everything you the learn, tickets is new. come in yeah. and you get it, and I'm fucking and I'm like, dude, I'm making this bad motherfucking bacon Swiss chicken sandwich. <laughs> These motherfuckers are going to know my name. Like I'm making the, you're yeah. going to get an extra side of fries, crunchy, not that soggy bullshit yeah. that Derek does. Yeah. Taking pride in it. Hell of pride. And I'm fucking carrying them to the bar and this fucking big old drunk dudes. I'm like, I made this fucking burger, got an extra slice in there and peeking out, watching them eat it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dude, dude. They're all just like, oh, yeah. I'm golfing just, this shit yeah. down. But, Fucking hot, dude! I loved it, dude. I, I love loved it. cooking. Every and station is and so dope. Like just having your station set up, be like, how efficient can I make this? Like that was my thing. Like I would like rearrange the stations all the time. Be like, okay, this flow. Like and even like help trying to help people design kitchens. Like I like the flow. I like the production, which leads into like another, cultivation and other stuff. For sure. It's like you're, you're you're learning how to do it. You're excited. Everything's new. But while you're learning all the new stuff, you're trying to figure out other ways that you could do it. Another thing taken for granted is that just that like going out to like a good restaurant and it doesn't even have to be great, but like back, back then everything was made from scratch. Yeah. Like when you went in, this isn't, this is an Italian, not even crazy rich. Like, you know what I mean? It's a, it's just a back then it's just a restaurant, yeah. but like every salad dressing that you want to order made from scratch yeah. ranch, blue cheese, Italian, not just Costco or uh, Cisco, Cis- yeah, no. or the Cisco frozen versions of everything. Rhode Island, what's the road? What's the dressing called? The island, what, the <laughs> Thousand Island. Thousand, <laughs> thousand. Rhode Island is somewhere between ranch and Thousand Island. <laughs> thousand Island, like making all that from scratch. Oh, what are we having on the menu tonight, Chef? Oh, it's going to be clam chowder. We just got in a fresh, 
50 pound the sack of clams, clams chopping the potatoes like the the eight a- the 10 hours that. before <laughs> yeah. the restaurant opens no wonder every fucking main chef was a tweaker yeah every single one's like ah oh, I'm gonna go outside real quick and they come back and just like <laughs> doing the line like yeah no wonder fucking everyone tweaks in it's the restaurant. all about like you have to sp- put so much time into it it's like a it's like a smaller form version of like cultivation like cultivation you got to wait how many days to, to see the end result but even cooking it's like it's a lot of prep it's a lot of process and then you don't even know until after they've eaten you're like well was it good it's yeah. like when I wait to see someone smoke something I'm like so because like, like everybody's opinionated you don't yeah, know what they're gonna think some things I like some things they don't like and then you just gotta take that and do it again yeah yeah dude but like good food like high end restaurant like fuck you can tell like each th- you just taste the quality in each step but dude there's there's a lot of stuff happening in and around here, like Sonoma County, Napa County, where these resorts, I call them resorts, these resorts are opening like tens of millions of dollars to build these resorts on, you know, these 700 acre winery properties and stuff like that. But where I'm going with this is like this model of not like a hotel and in a city and they're, they're building these crazy fucking resorts with these villas and it's all sustainable. Oh, so wow. at every single one I've gone to, we've gone to them in Healdsburg, Napa. Like my wife is all about like making me go to like one in the middle of the, you know, like once a month in the middle of the week, you know, going nice. for a night. And like each Good. one has its own, um, you know, campus kitchen with some fucking fire chef and like, like all dude, grown the f- on prop grown on site yes, the, the carrots, guys out there with the, the tweezers lettuce. like pulling plucking the stuff dude, off the, the tree well bark. the gardens <laughs> you can walk through the gardens that they're going out and That's picking awesome. all the ingredients from every day like so they're growing all their own lur- herbs all their own vegetables That's so they don't awesome. do their they get meat locally from but like this model and like when that food is prepared by these chefs Dude, this is different shit than a like a restaurant. You just like feel this, good. Oh. Your whole body like, and the, knows. And, the, and, the and like texture. knowing that it comes from that place helps your body. Like it's just thousand percent. Like the placebo effect of knowing the quality and like the time and the, the, the how special it is. Yeah, I think it makes an impact on how satisfying so, it is too. So yeah. good. I think of weed like that. Like I always get excited. You know when my peers share weed or I can go fucking oh shit David's dropping at the outpost. I'm gonna go yeah. buy one of his bags. Like. Because that's how I feel when I smoke weed that my peers grow. Yeah. I don't want to just go get some bag to get fucking high. Yeah. Like I want and not even just peers. Like if there's someone I like and I'm like, oh, shit, dude, I like them and and their principles and how they act and th- what they're like. I just want that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I want to support those. Like I want to smoke the flower that fucking blueprint is growing. I want to smoke yeah. the fucking flower that you grow. I want to smoke the f- there's and there's All something nice shit. about it too is because like we smoke so we, we always obviously smoke a lot of our own shit and smoke flavors <laughs> nonstop sure. but there's something so nice about going and fi- picking up some weed they have no other attachment to you don't have right. like 120 days of like secret stressors behind that weed right and you're like oh this is like I just can actually just pick up this weed and not think about what happened at week four right. not think about like what you know it's just you get to enjoy it I honestly enjoy it more because everything that I grow or my team grows like as soon as i smoke it i think about all the things that i could do differently right. and all the things that are wrong with it well, like yeah. it's like it, it, it sucks to say you know like i but i, I just want everything to be better and better or like hunting things you want it to be one way and it like looks so good and smells so good and then you smoke it you're like fuck right it's not the one or it like dries back and you're like oh my god yeah. what happened to this thing but then someone else who doesn't have that same stuff behind it like it could just be this build up of shit that I have behind it where I'm like am I gonna let myself be right. super into it even right. and then someone else's smoke would be like oh dude that was so good I'm like really I fucking I just like I t- try it and I'm like on to the next so how did going back to what we were talking about how do you make the shift from, um, from kitchen industry and kitchen in and LA to like Moving to like Sacramento and coming up in, to Northern California. Oh, dude! I mean, there was a uh, there was a lot of stuff in between. So I moved to uh, after L, after the studios in LA. I moved to Michigan, uh, kind of help out with my grandfather, and uh, I I was uh, working restaurants up there, and that's when I got into it. I did some kitchen, some like hotel cooking. I did some other restaurant cooking, and I really liked it. And uh, spent a couple of years there, and then I moved down to Florida randomly with a girl I was dating because she wanted to go to school down there. So I was like, fuck it, I could work at a restaurant, I'll right. go anywhere. 
So I went down there and I worked as like a bunch of different places in Florida. It was brutal because it was like a college town. Do you notice the food changes when you're going from these different areas? Like like oh, the palate sure. of the food or how they cook? Yeah, and just like just like with weed. Like and the thing I actually love it about weed and it makes me not feel so like hopeless about it. Is like California has our market. It's like super specific and super difficult and like competitive. And then you can talk to people in Maine and Michigan or wherever. And like they like all the weird right. shit. And you're like. Oh, <laughs> Let me like, get yes, down. Right. I want some of that weird stuff. But like the food is definitely a different place to place. And um uh but that's what I liked too is I'd I'd go down there. Like in, in Florida, just to like make enough money to get by, because every job was like five fifty to seven dollars an hour. And that's so why I worked at three places. I worked at this like hole in the wall burrito shop that was like a historical spot, which I thought was cool. And I was like, everything was so compact that you had to do each thing like the exact same order because there was not room to drain the lettuce that you shredded if you had not done like the. Wow. And everything was made from like we shredded the, all the lettuce, we shredded all the cheese, we shredded like everything was like scratched. You know, it was, that it was is so cool. And it was pretty dope. Like you know, so I saw that place, and then I worked at. Uh, so you're just rolling um, missiles all day. Yeah, I was just like, dude, they had like different versions of like making the burritos. We had like the steamer pump thing. So you top everything, you steam it, you have your stacks. And like, even then, I just like the processes and I'm like trying to figure out the fastest way to close. Right, at night. the most efficient. I set every, every night, I'm like racing against myself for how fast I can pre close, how fast I can close, how much more I can set up for the next day's people. Wow. Uh, and then I worked at this That's little like. That's an amazing mentality, bro. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just like. I, That's incredible. Otherwise, I get bored. You know, it's like I got to figure out ways to maintain things. And I worked at this. So I worked that place was like my like three o'clock to 10 p.m. I was there and 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. I worked at this ve vegan bookstore and I was doing food prep only all day. They're like, don't you want you know, like, you want to do anything else? I was like, no, I just want like, let me prep. Give me a list. Let me get down. And it was awesome. And I got to learn how to make a bunch of cool vegan stuff. And uh, then on the weekends. <laughs> I'd go cook brunch and lunch at this like sports bar, whatever spot, which is just like super slammed, hardcore grill, um, burgers, Fast. American, Plates just in and like out. super psycho, yeah. And I was like seven days a week. Are you smoking weed hours. before you go to work? Um, I was smoking a lot of weed then, then still. So like when I started smoking weed really young and I smoked weed heavily but for a long time. But you're smoking right before you go to work? Are you smoking on the job? I or? was smoking on the, for sure. Yeah. And then I, I, I barely drank at the time, honestly. Like I was always a much bigger stoner than I was a drinker in the past. And then, um, something changed. Like I started smoking weed at 11, like a lot of the Midwest kids, you know, I remember my first What do you first think that grade. is with Midwest? Like just. I think you're just bored, you know, like. For fun, you walk out the train tracks and you pick a distance and you cut off to the side and you like build a fort in the woods or like eventually go smoke weed in the woods. Like, right. Um, I remember this weird looking back is weird. Like this guy named Charlie, he has like a redheaded guy with dreads and green pants that he wore every day. Every and he day. was like <laughs> in super his natty, 30s, super natty, and he was like, you know, introducing all of us to the weed at the time. And also my brother's older and his friends would like, you know. It, it, it's funny, like some of his friends that were like there at, at certain pivotal points were also the ones that later on gave me my future opportunities. Wow. Like his same best friend was the first one who ever gave me a bong rip that like shot me to the moon. He was the first person I ever trimmed for. He was the first person I ever like grew weed with. Wow. So I was like, it's pretty wild. And those were all different places like decades apart. That's you know? wild. So, yeah. Um, I, so I went down to Florida, and then we made our way to, to San Francisco. You know, Florida, I was just working in restaurants, and then I would try to record bands for fun. Right. And then, um, then just tried to save up money and move back to move out to San Francisco. I was like, I had the big vision of going to San Francisco, and uh, got there, and it was definitely more intense there. And I worked like full time job cooking in that financial district. And then at nighttime I would do moonlighting jobs, cooking at a bar called the Parkside in San Francisco, which used to have awesome bands. I'm not sure. They're probably still a cool bar, but at the time there was like rockabilly bands and punk rock shows and all this stuff. So, and just like one little kitchen by myself, like having fun. Sick. So it's all it on out. you. Yeah. Just pump it and out. It was so fun. Set it up how I want it. Like I still do all those things that same right. way. Like I, even if I have a job, I got to have a side one that I do that like makes me really happy. For sure. Like I, like the Uncle Dad vibes versus Finest. Like I love doing the Finest stuff, but I got to have the fun one where it's just me too. Right. Um, 
And then, uh, yeah, just moved from there to Seattle, and that's when I went to the dark side. I was dating a girl that was working with Greenpeace, and she got uh, relocated. What's I was Greenpeace? Like, Fuck it. Greenpeace is a, uh, like an environmental nonprofit kind of thing. Save, save the whales and all Sounds that stuff. Like good it. stuff, yeah. Um, but she was head of the canvassing office up in there. You know, like the people on the streets that for signatures. Yep. Um, it's a lot less of it these days, I think, I feel like. Just Ever because there's COVID, so many. The, the, I feel like there's a lot more scammers out there that made it, like, gave people a bad taste for those kind of and things. And, like, what the fuck comes out of it? You know, That's you go, the other thing is I think spend your like whole sometimes day. the transparency is not always as... as uh, you're spending your whole day. You're fucking approaching every shopper coming out. Will you sign my petition? Oh, it was brutal. Like, I, don't, I don't know how they did it. They would get yelled at, What's spit on. What's that website now? Now they have that website, the .org one, where you just sign all those petitions. You sign uh, everyone electronically. Yeah. I That's, don't know. I, mean, I, mean, if, I just feel like all, a lot of those things are so tainted when you don't know, like... Every roundup, every charity, like, are they just, did they just start something? Dude, How do you know? The, the scamming go going on yeah. now in our, our lifetime and our world is at the most which, highest it's ever fucking been. Which ruins things for like the legit ones. Terrible. <laughs> it's fucked up. Ruins everything for everyone. We're, yeah. You know? Uh, it's, yeah. Makes so, this person trigger shy, makes, ruins this person having a potential customer, ruins all kinds of things. Yeah. I mean, just think of like, t- enduring that every day like you know when you, when someone comes up to approach you like for me i'm like oh god like how am i gonna like get out of this like what are they what do they want from me like i just and to have to deal with that and deal right. with that like those people all day long for me it just wouldn't work wouldn't right. work but you know power to the people who wanted to make the change for sure and do make some positive 100%. I, I did dress up as a shark one time i think we were sharks um, are sharks are dope. We, we were on the <laughs> north north beach in san francisco i think we were protesting cannon or something someone some company that was doing some weird... I don't even remember all Cam, the causes. The, the, the camera company? Yeah. Fuck you guys. You're going to take mean, a picture of these sharks breeding? <laughs> I don't even know what they were doing, but I was like, I'll dress up as a shark and say, you know, fuck Cannon. <laughs> we're going to petition to yeah. have you taken out of all stores, they were doing some. They were doing something that was funded from a bad, bad place. I, I mean, I they were making their lenses know. out of shark <laughs> fucking blubber. Yeah. They needed shark dick to like make their special super... <laughs> Deep fucking oh, yeah. depth, thirty-two Someone million eating, times eating shark fin soup or something. Um, oh, so yeah. shark fin soup is a big problem. Fuck, that's the root one. I mean, I still feel like that's dude, pretty just shitty. have some chicken noodle. Like you really like, gotta you have kill a, a shark? whole shark to have one fin in your soup. And like, dude, I mean, there's well, a first lot of, of all, it's not even gonna like change the broth flavor, <laughs> anyways. Like, it, it's just a, that's it's like another a rhino, clout t- shit. rhino tusk, like Stru- making you yeah. virile or something. It's uh. Unfortunately, like shooting this tigers and like the shit that they do to these instinct animals is is fucking terrible. I don't agree with it. I'm not against hunting or anything, but I'm against hunting shit that <laughs> there is no more of. For like well, some weird little specific thing out of it. You don't, animals, yeah. you don't need to kill a fucking tiger. You don't need to kill a fucking a brown bear and a black bear that there's barely any left of. Yeah. You know, you, well, you need a bear rug, a real one that you shot out in the woods with your fucking lottery ticket. Yeah. I'm, too, I'm too soft for that. I've never been Fuck really. Fuck all that. I've never been into like the. I, I like nature a lot. I like diving. I like the ocean. I've I've gone on these like scientific uh, tours where they'll go teach you about shark behavior and you dive with sharks and all that stuff. Like no cage, free diving off Hawaii, and it's awesome. You learn a lot about them. You learn how fucked up, you know, how humans are just, treated. Humans are just terrible. Yeah. In general, unfortunately, nothing we do ends in, <laughs> in anything good. But uh, bro. The other day I was thinking about just how much trash I've taken to the fucking in my little dump trailer that I bought (laughs) five years ago. And I'm like, dude, I'm going to hell. (laughs) I'm straight going to hell. I'm one person building all these grows and doing all this wild shit I do and all the trash that it's fucking produced like for one person, for me, for my household, like. I'm fucking going to hell. Bags and ba- thousands and thousands of turkey bags. I mean, uh, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty brutal. Like when you actually bro stop charcoal. And think about it, <laughs> dude. Thousands, millions of one gallons and two gallons. Like, what kind of fucking dirt dick uses a one gallon pot for sixty days and <laughs> throws it away? Me, <laughs> dude. When you start thinking about it like that, yeah, it's fucking terrible. We're going behind in a lot of things. It's like you should go out to eat and they're still put fucking doing everything and to go utensils. You're like, dude, I'm eating here. 
I'm but, starting to feel terrible. And it's like, just, like you, we were making all this progress, and now everything's to go. Like, you shut everything. I don't want to get into On top of that, it. I don't know how I could change so, anything after this conversation to make it any yeah, better. Yeah, no. All, all I do is think, think, <laughs> I, I just think about how shitty it is. Yesterday, I was I'm like, part of the throwing problem. a bunch of turkey bags in the trash, and I was literally thinking about McMahon. And like, you're throwing them in the bag farmers. because they've got the, they're all cracked looking. They yeah. don't have that new turkey yeah, look. Yeah, exactly. They could still use them. Oh, man. That sounds bad. Bro, don't ever show any of your work to Dave unless you put in a brand new turkey bag. <laughs> First comment. Damn, how many times has this been passed around? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, nothing. I've just opened it and closed it 40 times because I'm proud of my work. <laughs> See, too much air got in there, you know? The, the, but it's like... Not, not see-through. Dude, those guys don't fuck around. They'll, yeah. like, put a box in brand new turkey bags if it's open one time because it needs to... Like, they're trying to just have this pristine... It's already pristine, been twisted. You see the twists down the pristine. side. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's where it's at right now. It's so competitive. It's, it's uh, you got to you got to make those extra steps. If there's dude. shake in the bottom, remember, like you're just like consolidating dude, you know, bags. There's some shake in the bottom. There's a few Go things. Ahead, take it. Few things you can't trust people. Like, even when they come over, one first thing, no, no, get the fuck out of here. If you have like those smaller <laughs> turkey bags, <laughs> they're not like the full size where like you have this much extra, but they're like those. Oh. Kind of weirder ones. I'm like, okay, don't trust this person. Yeah. Next one is like, it's not that turkey consistency. It's like the more plastic. They're kinda. trying to get like the extra gram and a half from you're the like, thin bag. You're like, no, <laughs> out of here. Yeah. And then the ones who bring the snap open, you're like, can't be trusted. Sorry. Yeah, there's a, you know, got to follow the guidelines, <laughs> dude. So, so crazy. Uh, but back back to the so in Seattle, I was working restaurants and I was like. Bro, yes. it's amazing how many places you've like been and done and part of it was like, like just like I like to work at a lot of restaurants. I like to live in a lot of places and see what it's like, to, like not just to visit. Like I wanna it's go so live, cool. live in that spot, check it out. Uh but Seattle kind of like drained the soul out of me. <laughs> I realized after eight years there that I needed Damn. sunshine and I needed like real wet from friends. <laughs> real wet over there. Uh, it was just like gray. You know, it doesn't even rain that much. It's like and when it rains, it's not like Florida or other places. It's just like you know, eight months out of the year. And they're like, well, it's really nice for a couple months. I'm like, dude, I need like a little bit of, I'm already a head case. Right. Like I need all the support I can get. I need vitamin D. Right. I need sunshine. And they're like, even people try different things there. I was like, oh, if I go swimming indoors or you go to like a tanning bed, it's supposed to help or like, like whatever you could do. But instead I just like became a big hardcore boozer. Wow. And then that kind of just like, Got worse and worse, and I was like, "Why isn't I, dude? Why is I, like, I couldn't make friends there?" I was like, and in the past, I got I was all about my friends all the time. Like wherever I lived, I'd come home, my friends would already be there. We'd be smoking weed, socializing, like, and for whatever reason, like I had people I worked with that I still love, but like, just like people would look at you crazy if you tried to talk to a stranger like at a bar. With. Like, dude, I'm not trying to have sex with you. Interesting. Like, I'm just saying what's up. Right. Like I heard you talking about something. We're sitting at a bar. Right. That's what you do. And I just like got pretty bummed out, and I just like was turned into like a raging, not angry boozer, but just like a nonstop boozer. And uh, I was functioning, like I worked the shit out of. Right. Like I was still like pretty high functioning until like the last bit, like my eventual decline. Like it got pretty sloppy, and I like would black out early and into my shifts. <laughs> like, oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I had like, I worked Damn. down in the Pike Place market and like I would get, it got to the point, like for several years, I wouldn't drink while I was working. And then what are like, you drinking? You got like a drink behind the bar. Are you like dude, pounding some I hard alcohol? Whole, like it, <laughs> this is bad, but I mean, it's, it's, it's all real. But like, I, so I started off, I would never drink before shifts and I'd just drink after and get fucking shit house all night long, you know? But then it got worse and worse over time to where, and like it's restaurant industry, everyone drinks. Uh, it was in the Pike Place Market, which is like the historical market on the on the water in, in Seattle. And so there's all these levels and all these different restaurants and all these different bars, whatever. And I, and I worked in this restaurant. It was like super slam busy. So I could like run out, go down the hall, go to one place. I'd have a drink at a certain time. I'd go I'd go in like a different, like an hour and a half later, two hours later. I'd go to a different spot. I'd have a different, like nobody saw me more than like once at each drink? place. Like, yeah, what, like a shot. Oh, okay. Or like pound a shot in the back. Like a... Like a, a back of a boozy drink, you know, What's or a boozy drink? like having tequila with a shot of a margarita with no ice you know, to chase it. You know, it's like, 
Or and but like earlier in the day, I try to start with things that like didn't smell. You know, right. like start with like vodkas or like Rumplemans, disgusting shit. Like, and then later, you know, if I knew I was gonna eat a, eat something with it, I'd be like, okay, now I can have some Jameson or like whatever. Like, it just like developed over time. To like nobody, everyone's like, oh yeah, I saw him for his drink during the day. But like, I was going to a lot of places and drinking a lot of drinks. Damn, that's crazy. And then by the time While go, you're on the shift. Yeah, but I would still like crush the sales. You know, I'd move to front of the house and I'm like an introverted person. So it was like, it would give me this turbo boost to all of a sudden be outgoing. Oh, the alcohol and, would? Yeah, yeah. So I just crush like my, like my sales. That's I was incredible. hyper competitive. I'd be like looking up everyone else's codes to see what their sales were. I'd be like, I got to step it up. I got to fucking get this. So then I, you know, but I'd be like kind of hammered. That's incredible. It. It, was, it was pretty bad. And eventually it just like got So your body could just be on straight autopilot? Like that was the problem. Is like I, wish, I always wished that like, I always wished that I could just like throw up and fall asleep or something. But instead, just like slowly, like the light <laughs> fades from my eyes and I just like am a zombie. Like, I just but go. you're doing all the same work? There were times where I'd do like a little bit, so like that tail ends of shifts that I like wouldn't remember, but I'd do it. You know, or like, but it was never enough for someone to notice you stumbling around. There wasn't by the, by the time it was, it was like, I mean, for a while, I'd be like, I mean, I come in so hungover slash still drunk, but I'd like do my job well, so they'd be like, well, you know, right. it's Ian, he's got oh, it's it, all right. And then it just like over time, it always it always evolves and progresses to get shittier and shittier. If you're a real boozer, you know. It doesn't, you don't get better at like contain. For me, I didn't get better at containing it. Right. And so, no, with anything, so you start not giving like, a fuck. Yeah. I started start not giving slipping. more and more of a fuck. And I started slipping more. And like right before I got like uh, let go for it, I was like, you know, my boss loved me too. He was like a next, he was like a family. Like he'd had me for seven years. We were like very, very close. Right. You know, and he was like, he was so upset with me that I had put him, put him in a situation where he like obviously had to let me go. He's like, the customers and the employees were like, yeah, dude, you were hammered and some someone ordered this one thing and you poured it for them. They said it was the wrong thing and you told them to fuck off. Like, <laughs> like sloppy, right. you know? And uh, so I was like, I understood. And like, I went through a lot of weird shame about that. Got let go. I went and started at this other place where it was a whiskey bar and we would do like whiskey samplings during the day. So that obviously wasn't a great place no, for me to go. Terrible. Yeah, it was not good for, for the problems that I had. And uh, I was there for a while and I just like was just so bummed out and like embarrassed and ashamed of what had happened. So I was like a lot of my head in my head uh, about the whole thing. I would party more. And then I like that led to a point where I just like got super blacked out one day by noon and I fired, I fired myself. I was like the GM. <laughs> I fired myself. I said a bunch of shit to everybody. I woke up on my couch with my face was all bloody and like my thumb was broken and like Damn. <laughs> weird shit, you know. And I live, live, live like 20 miles from where I worked. So I don't know what, what happened or, you know. Wow. Um, and then at that point I was like, okay, I need to like, I, had a, I knew I had a small window to fix it because if I started drinking, I'd be like, ah, ah, ah that's, you know, right. crazy me. But so I like, my sister lived in Portland and I was like, you got, I knew my mom was visiting. I'm like, you guys got to come pick me up. I'm like, she, she said, why? She's got to come pick me up. I got to get the fuck out of here. And I packed up my house, uh, moved it all into, I had bought this like townhouse and put everything in the garage and like rented it out to a friend. But I started, started trying to coordinate that and then um, found this place in Mexico that did Ibogaine treatment. You What's know, this, that? Ibogaine is like this African root psychedelic kind of okay um natural therapy they think they'll use it for a lot of people with like do opiates how'd that even come on your radar um i think it's another thing where like my dad is always is into holistic stuff and all that other stuff my parents were ex hippies and they like you know uh eastern medicine and holistic versions of everything we didn't go to the hospitals a lot unless something was like broken ever you know and uh he found out about this alternative treatment because the first time I'd, done, I'd gone to rehab when I was like 19, which is a whole other story. But um, we found it in Mexico. I went down there. I drank the whole way down. No way. At the airport, land, landing, everything, sneaking. Just because you knew you were going in? I knew in? it was in. It was like or final like hurrah, dude. Yeah. And I was a little nervous. But uh, 
that place was a trip. Like, they gave me a few days where, like, they had to make sure that I was okay, like, coming off of the booze. Because I was, like, a 24-hour drinker. Like, I had blow and go in my car, and there were times, there was weeks at a time where I couldn't even move my car from a spot to another spot because I couldn't pass the test. Jesus. <laughs> That's brutal. It's ugly, yeah. Um, and then... So two yeah. we're two days into it, and now the holistic and then, treatment's going to start. And then they start. have this lady comes, and she brings me some five meo, and I'd never done DMT or anything like that at the time. I'd done acid, mushrooms, all that's the things what it is. Way DMT back. five meo is like a variation. I, I, I don't. It's, people are probably so mad that I don't know the real difference, but it. But it comes from a root, with. like a bark, right? No, that, that, that's ibogaine. Got ibogaine it. was different. So first, the lady came and gave me like the five meo. Which to me was like the, it was like the most intense. It could have been because it was the first time I did anything like DMT, but it was like. So can you walk us through what this was like? Are you in like your own little room, like a hotel room? I was or in like, my in my little room. It was like it was like a pretty are, nice house. And are you allowed to go into like a central area and outside and things like that? Normally during the day you can like stay within. There's like there's like a backyard, like a hammock, and then, then like the inside. But like you don't really want to like the each room has a different person in a different situation different case you know so, you're so they like, want to just keep you in the fucking room so mostly i just stay in the room and then for the ibogaine it's they, like being in a kennel when they when i did kind the ibogaine of. i stayed in the room so for the first night i did like the five m the lady comes in and she was awesome she tells it was like you a beautiful experience like we smoked it I had like the most so she smoked it with you uh she just no she just like whatever she just let it. it's like if when someone just smokes, yeah, with DMT or whatever. So, so like, she gives you a pipe. Experience. Is it a glass I pipe? I smoked it. Like, yeah, let's slow down I a little bit there. here. I want to know about <laughs> what this shit is. It's a glass pipe. It's you like a powder. DMT? No, never. Oh, oh, no, bro! Like we this got some like, here. Like let's. Sm- I want to smoke some right now. I mean, there's there's been so many different versions. This was definitely there was no other time since then that I've had that this kind of experience. It was like. Everything was the most beautiful it's ever been. Everything was the most in like, that room like with her in my just in my head. Like I had, my it. eyes were closed. I was like laying in her lap. She was like this heady, like old lady from Mexico. Like just awesome experience. And I was like, I woke, I came out of it, and I was like, I want more. <laughs> What'd she She's say? like, she gave me another one, and I like went she deeper. She gave you another like, rip. Yeah, and I was like, this is the fucking because dude, awesome, correct, most awesome correct me. What am I? <laughs> someone was telling me about something, and I thought it was DMT or some kind of route where they're like, there's two passages. Your first one, it's like the first time you smoke it, you kind of see everything's in puzzle pieces, and then there's like a second one that takes you way be like beyond that realm. Is that something else? Um, maybe it could be. I mean, because for me, I mean, I haven't done it, done any of it too much, like. Maybe ayahuasca. I don't what know, comes from the root that you can that we can buy online right now? From the root that you can buy online? Yeah. Oh, you're talking about salvia, like the old salvia. Not salvia, thing. dude. I no. swear to God. What's the other one you said after the DMT? Ibogaine. The, Ibogaine's isn't not even one of these here. like an African Five root that you can fucking buy like and online? Like the toad. Um, I don't think so, dude. I gotta ask. I gotta ask Joe. But I know that this, this time was like the blown out, like beyond reality. And there's been other times where I've smoked DMT where it was just like felt like the old Windows ninety five like wire, like plumbing screensaver. You was know? it was it puzzling or it no? Was like, yeah, it just like felt like real ge- like geometric and stuff. But this time, yeah, this was is like, what I think. That's what I think I'm talking about. This one about. was like out of this world, out of this reality, and everything. Was How just long like did so it last? Beautiful. Not very long. Like three minutes. Um, probably in reality, just a few minutes, and in my Dude, head, it felt like a lot longer. Thing. I could be wrong. And then, so that was my lead up. And then when they did the ibogaine, they like told me all about it. They told me the dosages. They have, this like, is a whole other day. Whole other day. Like the, the ibogaine, day after? they lock you in your room for the whole night. And they give they get they, you high and then dip on you. Yeah, and they just like you're in the dark room, no lights. And you're just like no lights. You're just so you're in your in mind's there, eye. And is you're what in you your are. mind's eye. Yeah. Because anytime there's complete darkness, and you're 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 looking and you're thinking to me, that's just the mind's eye. Yeah. Most of the time with with those kind of psychedelics, like with ketamine or DMT or five MEO or those things, like my favorite version is just eyes closed. I pick my I pick the right soundtrack that I want. Smart. I have like the environment that I want. I don't want any surprise knocks on my door. <laughs> For sure. You know, I don't I don't mix them. Like oh I've tried God. before. I've like, oh, what's Molly and DMT gonna be like? And it really just kind of they kind of ruined each other for me. So I want like the real experience. I like to make it a whole like ritual. For sure. But um the Ibogaine, I they locked me in my little room and I was like, 
set up. I was like, I can handle this. Like, dude, I've done a bunch of acid. Like, this is supposed. Are to you be excited good. at this time? I was after, kind of excited. I'm like, I'm like, this is the best way to come off of like drinking and using drugs and like whatever. This is great. Rehab. And you're thinking like, party. I'm not going to drink after this. Like, this is going to. I'm fix like, me. I, I'm curious. Like, part of me is like snotty and skeptical because I'm just that kind of person too. I'm like, yeah, let's see. Right. You know, but but I also like that was the first time I, I had tried to stop drinking so many times and I couldn't like I couldn't make it a day without drinking. That's crazy. Then I had maybe one time where I did 30 days. Was that because you just weren't stoked about like your life and where you were soberly or was it more of like you'd been drinking so much now like you really wanted that alcohol feeling or what it had over I, you? I, I don't know. I think I was just miserable and I also liked what it gave me as far as like because normally I'm. I, I've over time I've changed, but I was always like a very introverted, uh, shy person, and I liked the edge game because all of a sudden I could like do fucking anything, talk to anybody, get yep. myself whatever situation I wanted to like manifest by Jekyll my and Hyde. self. I'm like, yeah, oh, instant. I'm one of those people like after one drink, like I I'll, I could go all night, but after one thing, I'm like a different person. Wow, you know, that's weird. I like this guy um, right here. <laughs> <laughs> but the Ibogaine game, so I was like. I was ready. I got a little notepad. I was like, same thing. They come in. They have a. It's a glass pipe. I they, don't even do remember they pack how it like that a bowl. Was, was service. Was you hit it with a lighter. Like administered. I, I don't even remember. Honestly. Are they giving you instructions like, look, you want to hit this, hold they your breath for three amount, seconds, like, six, exhale. Nothing, like, nothing was like to that? that kind of detail. I can't even remember if I smoked it or if it was like in a drink or if they gave me a shot. Honestly, it's that was just crazy. Might have been the the, sphinc- the sphincter injection. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you're going to boof it and we're going to watch. Dude, I'll yeah. never forget like another buddy of mine. He was like talking hella shit about his fucking father-in-law and stuff. And he's like that motherfucking turkey baster. And I'm like, dude, why do you call him a turkey baster? He's like, cause he shoots dope through a fucking oh. turkey baster up his ass. Cause it hits, it hits <laughs> them harder. Real hardcore dudes. Just fucking. <laughs> yeah. The real hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> you want that instant hit. Keister. Fucking hardcore, dude. That yeah. fucking, that butthole tissue is crazy <laughs> absorption right uh, into the blood system. Yeah, I mean, I've never, uh, I've never gone It's like down trans, that road. from what I've heard, it's like translucent paper where like your drugs just disappear. Yeah. And it's like in. I've tried all sorts of drugs, but I never, uh, so d- if you did sit the on needle a, or the Keister. Ugh. If you sit on a pile of yayo, <laughs> <laughs> just settle on down. Yeah. Yeah, no, never done the needles or the no. keister. But um, the ibogaine it was it was interesting. It was very interesting. It was like it was all night. It felt like it didn't feel as intense as a lot of trips I'd had. It was very cinematic, and it was like historical and longer so like, and long lasting. Yes, very long lasting, and it was like pictures of my actual experiences and like my historical through life experiences. Like yeah, like a big roller coaster. I would like go and like certain parts it would go fast through and I could like see them like coming by. Wow. And then it would like stop at a part and like soak it in and then I'd like go on to the next part. So I was like, that is fucking sick. Yeah, it was really weird. And I was like trying to like take notes and like <laughs> so, take yeah. notes. <laughs> yeah. What? I was like, yeah, uh, it was very <sighs> weird. I was, tra- I thought I was taking notes. Dude. I thought I was taking like that book was full of notes, dude, right? And it was definitely not full of notes. There were like two sentences at the end. Wow. But I, and you know, at the, at the very end of this thing where it's all these like cinematic things, and I guess you're supposed to like, it helps you supposed to work through things because right. people do drugs and drink for different reasons, you know? So it's supposed to like unlock some shit. For sure. And at the end point, I remember it was just me and this weird like miner sitting in a cave staring at each other. And that oh, was like how it, it came to a oh yeah. it came to a stop. That there? was the, the end of the ride. It was me and this like this like ash colored miner. Staring at each other, not not saying anything inside this fucking cave, Whoa. and then I was just like done. And then the next day, I was like trying to figure out how much everyone was getting paid, what the overhead costs were of the place, and like <laughs> I was like trying to come up with how a much business. Money I was like, making? how much should I get this nurse to like start one of these somewhere? And like. <laughs> For real. I knew everyone's salary and I had all their phone numbers and I was like ready to go after that. I was like, I'm going to start one of these, dude. Because you had such a good experience. experience. Yeah. I don't even know why it was such a good experience, but I knew that I felt like something was better. And they say that it has like a physical effect on you, but also I think most of it is the mental side. Dude. One time at Reggae on the River, we did acid, me and Owen, and we were in this fucking tent with this drum circle and, and hundreds and hundreds of people and all these electronic mu- 
bro, I was convinced. I'm like, dude, call dad. Tell him right now I'm joining these guys. I'm going on the <laughs> road with them. Like, bro, hella immersed. Like at, like when they're shutting down, like yeah. Owen's like, dude, let's go back to our camp. I'm like, no, I'm joining yeah, this. This is where like, I live now. Yeah, like yeah. I thought... Like, like this was the coolest, most amazing thing I'd ever participated in. And I just want to do this for the rest of my life. Uh, I, I feel you. When I take psychedelics on that trip, I, I want that experience. Like, I want Isn't to be laying incredible? somewhere and then be like, this is where I want to be. I don't want to be like this. And I had some friends and I, we went to the boonies of Canada and camped on this island. And I was like, I'm, we live here now. We had to bring, drink a bunch of mushroom tea. I'm like, this is the home. I was like drinking a bag of wine out of like the bladder. You know, I was like, this is our home now. Moose Island. Dude, like, that's how I get when we do like, drugs. That's too. why I know like, when we go to the, the whole we go life to the spot, is it's going to be, yeah. we're like, like, we have to have someone come out and get us in a couple bring of Bring you back home. Like, hey guys, a bunch of people are waiting. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I want to see what it's like to go live under that tree for like 20 minutes. You know, I, <laughs> right. I just want to be able to be a kid when I trip for sure. and be around the right people. And be like, oh my God, you're tripping so hard. Oh my God. You're like, are you, are you just tripping so hard? Like, just leave me alone. Right. Let me see what it's like to, to live. Dude, this I always get extremely stuck when I'm tripping and plants are around and shit of just like oh, a yeah. crazy life. And when you get a look at, dude, I just, I keep trying to tell people, like, man, if you ever get a chance to eat mushrooms and being around like hundreds and hundreds of plants, like it's fucking yeah. amazing. You have amazing. to be in nature. People are like, oh, I ate mushrooms and I hung out in my living room. I'm like, oh. Yeah, Did it make you I can do a grow room. Yeah, grow room. I can different. do a grow yeah. room. Anything with living things. But dude, I need to be. Na- I don't want to be in my fucking house or in the city at some dude's house and just eat mushrooms in the fucking house either. Yeah, like oh, with, with other, pe- other people too. Dude, your so. senses and like your nose. Like when I'm on mushrooms and I'm like, oh my god, I smell the fucking ice in the air tonight. Like, oh shit, I think I just oh the ice cut my nose. I can smell Tahoe. <laughs> Dude, that's yeah. how I feel. I'm yeah. like, I'm like, and you got to be able to be around people where you can talk about that shit because they'll be like, yeah, dude, you taste the salt yeah. from the ocean right now. Yeah. You're like, oh, dude, it's like 1,500 miles away. I'm like, doesn't matter. It's yeah, been carried over here. And you want someone who's at least like, dude, I want to see that. I the coyotes that. like fucking four miles away. You're like, dude, Ian, do not fucking move. Yeah, yeah. the motherfucker's right behind <laughs> me. There, 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 there. Like, uh, My friends and I were, were we went out in some place in Washington on like a dude's like camping trip and we just ate a bunch of mushrooms we were all like just being weird in the woods like taking forever to crawl across this log that was over like a, <laughs> a creek this wide yeah. you know, like, we gotta fucking get over this and then we're all walking together and we're all like 30s 40s and some hikers walking by we're like a person a person you know? <laughs> <laughs> we're all like clustered together like, a person <laughs> and then we like look up and we think we're in this whole other world and look up and then see like cars drive by and we realize like we've made our way to like the ditch of a freeway right. and we're still just like oh yeah dude dude what an so, am- yeah how it's a am- that's crazy that you can eat something or take something and your your mind's eye and your yeah. imagination can open up like that it's uh yeah it's in your feelings and your body and dude that's fucking nuts that's it's incredible super humbling that's incredible like i never know if i need to if i need to like figure out what the right time is or if i just need to just you know cuz i that as i get older like the amount of times i take acid are very far in yeah. between i'm like once a decade i know and then the mushrooms are like even scarier but mushrooms are, are scarier to me as far as like how much you can see in yourself. Ass is like everything's cool yeah. and beautiful. Like you'd think I would do it more often. It's just literally comes down to like the time. Right. How, when do we find 12 hours to be like, hey, nobody can call me for 12 exactly. hours. Exactly. Right. When do we find 12 hours to be like, hey, nobody can call me for 12 exactly. hours. Exactly. Don't I, interact with me yeah. for 12 hours unless you're on my I get, level. I get anxiety if I turn my phone off for two hours. Oh, no. You know, I turn it back on and I'm like, oh, I'm being punished. There's a ro- <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot. Exactly. Sorry, I tried to check out for a minute. Um, no, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. But yeah, it's, it's nice to have those escapes and find the So right you people. have the second trip. You're immediately be like, dude, I need to bring this to the masses. Yeah. So and, your uh, head's doing that. How much longer are you at this place for after that? Um, I, I like asked to stay a couple extra days and I was like trying to like help some of the other people. I'd like found this one guy just like laying on the ground outside of his bed and he, all he wanted was like some saltines and some ginger ale. And I was like, is anybody helping around here? Like all these people are spending money. And that's part of why I was like started figuring out how I could do it and try to do it better, you know? Got They'd it. make all your food out food at the beginning of the day and sit it on the counter and be there all day and then be doing all these other things and like there weren't wasn't really like any communication, like no one on ones, no group. Like they took us one day to get massages. I'm like, dude, you could do this 
like this is like the ba- the base of this is pretty powerful. Right. You can make you it can better. make this so awesome, and the cost is like. So did I, you did I'm you still do it? Did you smoke more throughout your time there? Was, that was it every it. day? Just those two times? Yeah, just the ibogaine the one. And time. And even if you asked for more, they wouldn't let you. Um, it didn't really come up like that. I you mean, weren't like, bro, like let me get another hit. No. It was just too much. Like it was a lot to process. I don't know. I just felt like it was enough. I and I. I I'd be like, want to do that shit I know, every night. I mean, yeah. Normally it's like the, the like fucking I'm here. personality. I'm like, I want to yeah. do it again. Fucking, can you do it twice as hard next time? Right. Normally that's me. It's like, oh, it says to take two. I should probably take six to make sure I don't miss anything. <laughs> you know, that's how I've always been. This is what got me here in the first place. I should take you know? <laughs> six. So I don't miss anything. I don't want to miss out on an experience. I feel like I fuck. You know, <laughs> wasted my time. You wasted my time. Uh, yeah. So. so what did what did what were the feelings of withdrawal like for you both physically and emotionally after you'd taken these two hits and you were still there? Um, I mean, well, they still had me like on, uh, on like a program where they're checking my he- checking my health and I had like an IV and all this stuff to make sure because you could like stroke out if you're a hardcore boozer or whatever. <laughs> uh, and like, they would like borrow the IV stand from the other dude. <laughs> 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 it was like rusty, like American <laughs> Horror Story IV stand. Um, and then afterwards, I mean, honestly, the biggest shit that I encountered was just trying to uh, figure out how to live socially in so a whole you, new way. It worked. Like you were leaving there. Like I don't need to drink. I ever was again. leaving there, and I was on the mission to not drink. I didn't want to drink. I like. I didn't, I don't know if it would have worked if someone had forced me to do it, and I hadn't like had like. It was not like I just had like a one bad time. I had yeah. a lot of like real shitty stories and real bad things that happened and things that I was l- lucky to survive and lucky that I maintained certain friendships. I mean, I lost a lot of friendships for sure from being just a maniac boozer. Like I wasn't like me and I was just, you know, right. the, the, the part, the window of fun got smaller and smaller. Yeah, I had all these multiple personalities that, that I would come that people would give me for as I got further like drunker and drunker. Got it. So it was like be like it was a joke for a while, but then as I got older, like the joke wasn't as funny. Right. Uh, but I, like I left there, I went to San Diego. I was like staying in a little like um, hostel, and I was just, like playing in the ocean, I'm, like getting sun, and I had bought these tickets to go to Asia. And while I was working, I had never done anything like that before in the past. I was always worker bee since I was like a teenager. Like I said, like I worked so much that I'd never stuck with sports because I wasn't allowed to play if I missed practice. So I would like try to join every sports team and play sports, but I had to work part time jobs forever. So I could never like do that. So and then when I was older, I was always just like dedicated to whatever jobs I had. I never like took a month off to go travel. Yeah. Like that shit like it just never even occurred to me to like have to go somewhere and then go stay with my family when I got back. Right. Or, like uh, so I like. I wanted to like do some traveling, so I had these tickets that I had bought. I'm pretty sure I got them like when I was hammered to go to Cambodia and Thailand, but I still had them. And I was like, I'm gonna figure out how to go. Wow! And I went there, and I had like one little backpack, and I was gonna rent out my condo in Seattle to to, to finance my trip because I didn't have. I got a couple hundred bucks when I got there, and I was like expecting my rent. And uh, fortunately, my my friend that was renting for me just decided just to like not really pay me my rent. Yeah. In, a t- in a timely manner so it kind of fucked with like what i was able to do but i spent two months just like out of a backpack and cruising around and i'm not really i realized i wasn't into the scene of like a new place every day i tried to make it like a crazy itinerary but instead i would just go someplace and be like i'm gonna stay here for two weeks or like, i went and stayed at this little village in cambodia and like uh volunteered at this little village and like taught little kids and like slept on the floor and tried to have the experience you know wow and it was just like I, I was the happiest I'd been. I had the least amount of shit that I had. I was getting sunshine every day. And I was just like my skin just like everything about me just felt healthy from like sun and sweat. I'm like, wow, <laughs> just I don't know. And I got back. I flew back to Seattle after two months of doing that. And the day I flew into Seattle, they're like this is the coldest day of, or the, the darkest day of the year. And I was like, ugh. and I realized it's like. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. Uh, yeah, within that month, I was like, I'm, I'm gonna move in a month. And then my my brother's friend, while I had been like when I was down in San Diego, I, I saw my brother's friend, the one that I'd like my yeah. first bong rip, first trim job, whatever. And he was like, dude, I'm doing a project down there, down in LA. 
And I was like, awesome. Like, it turned out it was going to be like a cultivation prog- uh, project. And like, I always loved weed. The only time, and it makes sense now, but like the only time, the times that I smoked the least were when I was like the worst with, in my alcoholism. Because <laughs> right. I was like, weed helps you look so quickly at yourself. And like, if you're being a shitty boozer, it's not a good look right. for yourself. So I'd be like, no. Right. You know? Took me a while even to get back into smoking, honestly. And now like I, I try to smoke everything I grow and I love the flavors of the taste, but I can't like can't smoke like I used to. Just for to, like sure. try to out smoke people, have a lot of ego involved, like, oh dude, I fucking smoke tough. I'll smoke all day, every day, I'll out smoke, you know, like I just don't I don't feel right. like need. Now I celebrate being lightweight. Like I don't know. But um yeah, I got back and I was like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. I gotta go to where it's sunny. And I went down there and I just, I was like, he's like, oh, yeah, we got this little apartment that um, his partner was remodeling. He's like, you can move into the apartment. You can do whatever. We'll have a job waiting right then. The apartment was right next to the grow, which in Amazing. L.A. is crazy. For sure. It was in the valley. And so I packed up my little dog, packed all my shit into like my little Honda, another Honda. <laughs> and then I took all my stuff that was had been stored the whole time and I put it all in like a pod. And that was the other thing. It was like after months. Like I opened it up, I looked it up. I'm like, what am I doing with all this shit? I just gathered shit right. for years, and I was so happy without any of the stuff. But then, like, you start going through it and like deciding what you're gonna donate and keep, and like your little schmiegel fingers start going from things. Like, well, maybe I should hold on to that. I can't let that go, right. you know. But yeah, I looked at it in fucking five years. Yeah, it doesn't really. It's just a a collection point of some time in yeah. your life. You're not doing anything with it. And I was like weird shit that I like a box of like perfectly rolled up, like broken belts that I had for like t- right. two decades. You know? Right, <laughs> right, right. Uh, but I got to LA and I had like took what I could fit in my car and moved into this little studio. It wasn't even done, done being remodeled yet. Started working at this place. I was like scrubbing pots. I'd never seen like a grow facility. And it was like at the time they were building out the first room. And so I got to like jump in and like, build that first room from scratch and check it out. And I've, I've always been like from audio engineering days, like I, I like clean yeah. lines and like things were stable to the walls. Exactly. And I was like taking my time, like making sure everything was like looking really nice and lined up. And um, I just started off scrubbing pots and doing whatever the, the shitty work was. And then I was like taking, writing down, taking notes of all the projects we would do over time. And I just noticed that like, you know, it was like it was still back when it's like you know you, you'd work for fourteen hours, and then the next day you might only have like an hour of shit to do to walk through, or it wasn't spread out that like to me it wasn't spread out super efficiently. So I just kept taking note of like the timing of everything and what weeks you did what. I didn't want to go on the internet and look up stuff like Instagram wasn't even right. a thing, right? Um, so I was just like. Wasn't even an option. Sure, yeah, just trying to like follow the patterns and like write it out, and then I started like prior putting down the things as like they were priorities, and started like figuring out how I could spread the weeks out to make it like functional hours, set hours, and then slowly, um, when we got another building, and they let me kind of like take over building, help me build that one, and start applying some of the things that I wanted to apply to the other one. I was like, I just want to run it like right. Like the kitchen, like a like kitchen. A kitchen. You yeah. prep, you get ready, you put away, you clean up. Yeah. I mean that. And if you don't fit it in those timelines, then you're doing something wrong and you got to fix the design. Right. And then even like nowadays, like I, I have really good teams. I really like the people that work in all the buildings and finest. So I've always been like a farm team person. Like I try to take people that don't have much experience right. and try to so just like for many reasons, but like so mainly just for consistency. It's not like I don't want to. I want to hear ideas and do stuff, but it's just right. like I just want it to be consistent. But, For sure. Um, Done the exact same every single time, the same way. Like, that's what it all comes down to. Like, every time you walk in a room, you're like, man, you guys have fucking been with me for so long. Like, I want the drippers to look a very certain way, to flow a certain way. Like, yeah. as, a, as a person, like, do things in your life the same way. It doesn't have to be different every time. And that, and practicing that same way makes it so you condition yourself and you condition skills later on your life. Yeah. And you can, you can make the changes you. on the other things that, that, uh, you know, matter and make more of an impact. But yeah, I'm like obsessed about things. Like I like the emitters in the certain corners. Right. Of the yeah. Like cubes. I want it all the same. All the and same. when you see it off, I'm like, dude, I can see it across a room. Yeah. Like, who fucking did that bench? Yeah. 
Why are you choking the plant out, wrapping the emitters all the way around the stock and sticking them in? Like, I, how do you not yeah. see that? Some of it comes off psycho at first. Dude, and then drip just shit get so is pet to, yeah. peeve for me. Yeah. I need fucking the certain amount of drippers and, yeah. you know, shit's off. And growers do different shit. Oh, I'm going to put a hole every here. I'm going to put four together. I'm going to, dude, I can't stand anyone else's shit. I don't know yeah. why. And but I'm, I'm like, going to do it. It's like, you know, there's been, we've done all different ways, right? You've yeah. tried different ways to find the way that you like. And that's why you stick with it. Right. And I think that's a, a lot of people will, will forget. It's like, dude, I've, I've done all, I've tried a lot of these things. That's why I like the particular, the particular way. Right. Uh, but like I'll move, move the, move the emitters after a couple of weeks. If the top's getting too hard or like whatever. It's, uh, but you just leave that fucking hole there just to suck down some pythium or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that yeah. opened stab wound where it's got its nutrients yeah, its whole I life. It, I give it a little extra stab before no, I take dude, it I out. Just, I plug it. I sprinkle a little cocoa in there and do a little dot. Yeah. Down. No, no, no. I don't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that don't. Uh, I, I love seeing the way everybody does their shit differently. I think it's important. Do you I don't hear? think I'm a fair. I don't think I'm a very good grower but then sometimes i'll go see i'll see stuff and then i'm like i feel a little better about about it but and then like, every once in a while you surprise yourself you're like oh my god yeah. i still am a good grower thank god uh, i thought i was but, yeah i thought I, I was losing it like the color I get the <laughs> imposter syndrome i have oh, like sure. a bunch of good rounds in a row and then i'll have one bad one and then i start freaking out because like as we scale it's like we're working on different like doing different tasks like i miss just going in and plucking leaves myself for mm -hmm. hours on end i love that in silence like, send everyone to another room let me pull leaves listen to the music listen to whatever like i don't i get less and less plant time but i still like try to try to get in there and do it i mean i do all my plant time on the outside right with whatever the passion projects and stuff are so and I'll um, never stop that. Side question. Do you believe any or do you have any opinion on like there's all kinds of like old tales on like how to make your weed super bad badass to the end? And like I was like reading about some shit where like <laughs> Did you do the nail? Dude, I was just about <laughs> to ask you the nail, like pushing the nails through the stock the last week. I was like ready to do it when you when shit. you when you were talking to me about it. I was like, man, what kind of nails? What kind of screw? How thick the um, thread? Yeah. Do you want like galvanized? You want like, what, what kind of you tack? Want brass? Even tack? tack. Yeah, tack. You're basically just. What weeks are you going to start putting the thumbtacks in? It would be. Yeah. It would be, beginning of week eight. Okay, but then you got to do the side by side. You got to see what weeks a little week seven torture. You got to go. You and it would be easy to do when you have a few plants in a row. Yeah. But the idea is that what is the one thing that the only mechanism of defense that the plant has is um, oil, THC, like that's its way to, you know, push away predators or anything else yeah. that's fucking with you. Like even when, dude, I one time had this, I don't know if, I think it was like a thrip infestation that was like so intense, but like it was so fire. <laughs> and I felt like it was like super fire cause because like the plant the was trying to get like put out a defense net mechanism against the thrips. You're saving some of the thrips for the next release. I wasn't right? trying to do that. I mean, dude, I want them gone, but I was just like, man, this looks fire. Yeah. Even though it looks like it has a million bugs on it. Yeah. You never know. I mean, it, it's, it's hard to explain to people. You're like, I'm kind of a plant torturer. Like I want to take, make sure they're good. But I want to also want to make and sure so that they're not doing well. Any, we, so they're like a little bit bummed out at the right time. So like we're like an S and M like yeah plant. Dad, yeah, because there's daddies. the razor. You could do the slices. <laughs> you could do the holes. So no opinion on any of that kind of stuff. Um, I'd be, I'm down to try literally anything always. Like I, like <laughs> it does. It could be the craziest shit. And but I'd you haven't. Like, are you have? I haven't are, done the need. I haven't done the 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 nail in yet. Did you get results from it? Or you, I haven't you, done. You I'm doing it this time. Okay. I'm gonna Week do eight it here. I'm not there, but that's what I'm going to do. Screw we or nail? Um, one plant's going to get a tack. One plant's going to get a finished nail. Okay. Screw, I just, yeah. Like a screw, like each day, you screw it so it's like a fresh set of threads. I'm not going that <laughs> far. I hear what you're saying. I'm just going to do the damage and see yeah, if it. See what it does. But then again, like you got, I don't know you if that's try. good enough, just opinion. Because yeah. like if I'm just looking at it, that's like when you smoke someone's bud and you're like, oh man, yeah, like this is okay. And you're like, well, this is great. Like sometimes I'll, I'll smoke the same bud one day and then I smoke it two days later. And the first day I was like, oh, finally. And two days later, I'm like, I don't see what, what I liked about well, this. Well, you can't wait too long because you just lose the smell anyways. <laughs> and then you're like, 
you bring your shit over to your buddy's house. You're like, dude, this is new stuff. Girl, you grew it like 30 days ago, and there's like no smell to it. He's like <laughs> squeezing this super dry You just got to twist it and rip it real good. And you're like, dude, I swear to God, <laughs> that smelled just like a fucking grape and watermelon were yeah. fucking The one days time ago. you opened the bag, and then the next time you got to put it in the fresh bag. Fresh bag. <laughs> um... Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm always down to try different things, and I, I still do that no matter how good around is, uh, or how bad it is. Luckily, I have the freedom and my job to do that. Uh, as I mean, it's freedom plus the pressure because you have to For produce. Sure. But um, definitely, and, and then at produce. home I can do or wherever, whatever other little passion spots I can do whatever I want and get as weird as I want and luckily grow whatever strains I want and I can just be like hope that it's going to smell good and hope that it's going to taste good. And I don't have to worry about the potency For testing sure. and all that stuff or what, what the color it has. And I can grow all the weirdo shit that I can hopefully bring into the other stuff. Let's talk about some of that weirdo shit. Like let's talk about some of the crosses that we have going together as part of our fucking gunslinger high society, like fucking. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's a lot of different approaches. So like right now I, I try to keep as many, going in as many different places as I can. I can't stop. Like, I just, you know, I have eight males of one pheno that I'm, like, trying to pick out the studs that I like for different reasons. Right uh, now? Right now. And then I have two others. What are those studs that you're, you're they're, picking um, through? They're, uh, I'm still trying to fight for the Dolomite. So it's, it's the Dolomite to uh, Sour Diesel. Wow. New York Sour Diesel. Um, my buddy Andrew, Funky Fresh, shout out Funky Fresh. He, he had the diesel seeds. And he found some good males and he dusted. I gave him a bunch of stuff to dust with that. Nice. And he had his own, so he put that on some things. Um, so we got we got some some freaks coming from that because he's into that too, you know. So I'm hunting I'm hunting those males right now, and then I got this. What are you uh, looking for when you're hunting a male? Um, really, I'm just looking like I, there's probably better ways to do it. I'm not I'm not the most experienced. Uh, Flavor maker. You I don't know. know. He breeds some Breed. fucking insane shit. But I'm, looking, shit, I'm dude, looking, at like s- looking at stem rubs, and okay. you can only get for, it's like you only get a couple at a time. So you got to really remember which one you like because right. it's like it's like when you go through and smell a bunch of flour by like number number seven or eight. You're right. like, I can't. What's the point? Exactly. With the stem rubs, I'm like after two, I got to do like two at a time, and then I got to remember which one of those because like I don't know. I just I tried different fingers. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm looking for structure, and then I'm looking for the stem rub. And some of them will like shoot that like the vigor, um, but sometimes I don't want that depending on what I'm going to put right. it on. You know, it's like I'm sure everyone has different things. Everyone's got like the markers they're looking for. I'm not really like that. I'm like same thing. When I was in kitchens, I was never like a French chef. Right. You know, I was I was like, what do we have to work with? Right. Let's figure it out. Um, and then I got these other two that uh, I hunted from um, some stuff by Intrepid, who makes really cool flavors. Uh, he's got this Wendy peppercorn, and I think it's a, uh, I think it's grape tea to pink panties. I'll have to double check with them, but that one's got some really cool candy, uh, candy chirps there. And uh, so I got two of those males, and then I got some reversals that I'm doing. I reversed the warheads. Fire. I reversed um, uh, the lemmings. And Fire. Um, do you notice do some things reverse differently or do they all kind of some just don't fucking reverse for me at all I don't know what I'm doing wrong I just assume I'm doing something wrong but like you know there's different ways to do reversals that's why with the other ones they're like the the true males and I I think that I love working with that it's like so satisfying just the clouds of pollen for sure (laughs) and you just like are you collecting the pollen are you collecting the pollen and putting it in some kind of like thing to save it in or are you putting that male plant in with the females um as i do it if i have the space i'm i so f- like for this one for example if i have like the eight studs and let's say i have let's say i have a hundred different things that i'm trying to decide 100 completely different things i'm trying to decide which things i want to put different pollen on um then i'm going to isolate them all and i'm going to dust them you know, live. I have them all timed out. Got it. So I'm going to like, I don't really like to cl- collect the pollen and store it. I don't know the best ways. I mean, I've heard some different ideas on how to do it. I'd rather just do it like live, <laughs> shaking the, shaking You're the plant on the other You're not trying to do artificial one. insemination. You're right. trying to let like, dicks I fly. I mean, the only time I ever even did the paintbrush style 
was my very first time I ever did it outside of like the, so the first time I ever tried anything it was when Kieran Rado came down and he helped us do the lava the lava uh, lava cake crosses. You made those right there in Sacramento. He like, he, yeah, he, he came. We went to this little spot that we could set up. Like I think it was eight lights in with whatever re- extra equipment we had, and he just sh- showed uh, Bo and I how to do it, and then. Um, yeah, we had like zones of like, you know, I think it was eight different crosses and, uh, and what did you got? You guys release seeds of all these? Like those are the first seeds That was the very released? first cross. Yeah. The lava cake ones. So it was like the PB souffle came from that. Yeah. There was the orange eruption, all those ones. And that was the reversal. So, and, and it was all stuff from tissue culture. It was like, that was from our entire lineup of what we had at the time for finest for tissue culture. Because we were still building like right. the library at the time, so it was like race fuel, GMO, um, cream sickle, dosy dough, uh, Mendo breath, like a bunch, bunch of that stuff. The original stuff that fine yeah. said, yeah, and crossed all that stuff to lava cake and put the lava cake on all that stuff. Wow. Um, and so we had like one lava cake reversal for each, like surrounded by those ones, and even in there we like shook them around, and I never, I didn't hear about any like mixed seeds from people that popped them and hunted them. Like, which I, I would be stoked if I was like, Oh, I got 10 creamsicle crosses and then one GMO cross. Right. Like that's a, that's a bonus flavor I get. But, right. um, I try to do it organized to work. Like, you know, usually if I do it in, before I've done it in tents and I'll put the one reversal in with the tents and I'll make sure they're all like gutted to go outside somewhere or, you know, they're not mixing as much as right. possible. And now I'll just like take them out in clusters and I'll do them. I'll wait, maybe spray and put them back in, and then like kind of either put them back together or keep them in their own little zones. Got it. And uh, but they're, they're the very first time I did it um, was like by, by myself. I did it in a four by four tent, and I reversed like six different things, and I had like nineteen different receivers in there, all small, and I like actually tagged and painted and bagged different branches. Wow. And just from that time, I think I got like 45 plus different Holy crosses that shit. I did. And so I was like, 45 I was, I was trying to build crosses. like the baseline. I was like, I, I wanted to do a bunch of stuff. I don't want to like, I don't want to do more like sell seeds that were just, I mean, everything I've talked to the people, that, uh, anything who, that I've worked with, I talked to people that I work that, about, right. it. you know, it's like, you got to be, respectful but if it's things that you've hunted then there's like other politics that go into it i guess but i still would want to talk to the person and check and make sure like so you're saying this always is like give a, it back even this yet. is like a fucking seed code yeah i think so i mean i don't I'm, i might not even know but it's like i think that at least offer the things back when people give you stuff or that you're working for them like i've hit up people and be like hey i used this on this so like i made the seeds and then like i'll send you some seeds and if i hunt something cool i'll send them to you or i'll just send them like um, my buddy Andy weeds the people in, in Washington. He sent me some pollen, so I used it on some a bunch of that, that stuff, that first run. He sent me, like, jealousy pollen, and uh, so I just sent him half of everything that I that came from it. And then the, the goal was if he hunted something cool, he could send me a cut. If I hunted it. something cool, I could send him one. And we'll still, like, cross some stuff. I mean, I, I'm pretty bad when it comes to, like, <laughs> getting things in the mail, but um, I have... I have a bunch of cuts that are for him, and that I have some things that I hunted and found, especially just recently. I'm hunt- I'm finishing hunting some stuff that was used with one of his cuts that he sent down. Like he would send me a couple cuts to work with. That's dope. It's like this pineapple tart was like close to the pineapple dolomite, but the tart was like even better than the dolomite. Yeah, as far as pineapple, <laughs> just as far as like as all it was like super creamy and awesome. And like th- there's times where I, I appreciate other people's stuff for sure. You know, like if someone does something better, it just makes me want to work harder at, at finding other flavors for sure. I test shit nonstop and some, someone gets something and it hits like 5% terpenes. I'm like, man, I, like, I, I'm finding these things that I think are so cool and then I'll test them and they'll get like less than 2% terpenes. I, like, I don't know if there's things that are missing from the testing, you know, like uh good friends with Natalie who you met, like she, believes that there's just like with, with certain flavors that we've tried we agree there's like there's got to be something else in there that's not showing up on the test because it'll get you high it'll be a good smoke and the flavor's right. there but it's just like it's showing like a 1.2 terpene like right. how the fuck there's there's a lot to 
dive into there, I think, but like flavonoids, terpenes, I think there's a whole lot of stuff that just still needs to be discovered. And we have some pretty fire, crazy shit that uh, we're doing together. And yeah. Our, there's, I'm hunting those ooh, right now. I just took all God. the backups and I got the first, the first real hunt of like half of the ones we did. What but would so, you say are like maybe what are top three popping out to you or anything oh. got your attention yet? Or? Um, yeah, definitely. So you gave me that caramel apple. That was like the craziest. So thing. unique. And the coolest thing about that is that was green weed. Yeah. But like anybody who ever, when they smelt it, they still bought it. Yeah. I only had a few here and there and very limited, but like crazy caramel. Did you grow? Did you do it in HPS or LED? LED. No, I, mixed light. Okay. The one I. Did I give you any flower? Did you get to see the flower finish? You, uh, you didn't give me flower. You gave me the cuts. So the first ones I did. I took the one and I reversed it, and then I took one plant and I flowered it. So you got to see it and smell dude, it, right? I, remember, I think I I'd sent you a picture. Yeah. I texted you. I was like, dude, it literally tastes like fucking caramel, caramel apple. Yeah, caramel and apple. And mine was I did under HPS and it, it had one some plant, color. One yeah, plant. One plant. Pretty big yielder. Had color. Yeah. And it threw the fuck down, huh? Dude, it threw down. It had color. That's yeah. amazing. And I've 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 found a little bit of that like my. My color abilities, like, I don't know, it could just be made up or just the way that I do it. Or I don't know how to work with LED very well yet, but um, Dude, well, I'm Jan a lot better at pulling out color under HPS. Don't get rid of them yet because, bro, I got I got my fucking under canopy lights coming. Yeah. And I, let I me just say, those. let me just say, little fucking Game teaser changer. for the whole world, but helps with color. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, yeah, I mean, ironically. I, I'm, I'm a psycho, though. You know, my, my one of my little, like the passion project spots where I can do my R&D. I've done five runs and I've changed the lights four times to totally different setups. Wild. Like just to, just because I can and right. I want to. And I don't, like, I still have the equipment, so it's not a waste of money. But like... So back to what we were saying, we had the... the a car I was a caramel apple, and then I crossed that to um, some things that you brought me. So the peanut butter and gelato, which is going to be crazy. That's going to be fire. And then you gave me That's another. a fucking caramel apple peanut butter gelato. I mean, like that's a, that's a crazy. I mean, the, yeah, that's got to be. That's, that's going to be really for good. The, for the market right now, I think that one's like going to be undeniable. Um, that's going to have good color too because it's just going to be a colorful plant. Yeah. I can tell. And cross it to the Cushman's Gelato 41 cross that you gave me. Um, you like you gave me a lot of ones that are gonna be like pretty guaranteed. Like if if we can't For find sure. something out of those. <laughs> <laughs> that people will want to buy. We it's did it, we, dude. We did it for the streets. That yeah. those crosses are definitely has current street bullshit market all over them. Yeah, and uh, which is, I mean, if as long as you, as long as we get a chance, to, like come up with something that's different and will will taste good and something unique. Like I think taking those things and like, I, like I'm down to try to pursue a, a candy flavor as long as I could try to throw some other elements in there. Exactly. And, like we, I, I cross it to the dolomite. <laughs> So the caramel apple, pineapple dolomite. That's going to be fucking stupid. Across it to the fight milk, which was a strawberry cream, Mac 1. If we can jealousy. put the frost from the fucking dolomite onto the caramel apple. Yeah. I did it onto the um, to the lemmings oh. and cutthroat candy. That's very strong. Caramel apple, cutthroat candy. I'm hunting that. That one's in week five I right now. And it's very unique. It's not just straight candy terp. Like everyone's like, oh, candy gas. Like that's so unique with everything else in there. The it's wedding cake, the, the, yeah. the Skittles, the chauffeur. Like It's got some some layers for sure, which is what I like about it. And I, I've said this a lot before. Is like I love as a consumer, I love when something smells one way. Right. And then the taste of it can take you Completely um, different to a whole place. other direction. Like that was my favorite thing about the chauffeur, and that's why like, when we hunted the chauffeur, because you've so used in a lot of crosses. The yeah, chauffeur. but we crossed. That was the second cross we did with Canrado, and that was um, he sent us pollen, and I took it, dude, took it out of my flower rooms. We we set up the ones that we were gonna put it on. We took them on slabs out of the flower room and into the dry room, and pollinated them in there, and then left them for a day, and then sprayed them off, and then put them back in the flower room with all the rest of the, like the full flower. Just like and it worked fine. Just risky business, and it but it worked. worked? Yeah, it nothing worked else well. seeded or anything. Dude, we did three plants of each recipient, thousands, thousands of seeds. And like they're still, we didn't really push hard enough at the time 
for uh, to get those like hunted and build up excitement because we were like. But I remember at the Emerald building, Cup, yeah. like you guys were selling them all. Yeah, and it, it went really well. But I, I mean, I still haven't seen. There's a lot of those that I haven't seen, or yeah. we haven't even hunted. And I'm actually gonna start hunting a lot of that older stuff again, just because it's already they're already fine as crosses. Right. So I want to start there. It's their own lineage, basically yeah. their own creations. So that, that there's a lot of stuff happening with us right now, and uh, but but like the stuff that we're doing is super fun. So I cross it to some other freaks and. Just like the people that come, like like that we get to share that with, like that event, and then like everybody sending pictures of their plants and how beautiful they are and, and lush, and they, dude, it's so. I, I think it, I think it's really important, and that's one of the things that we talk about is like we want to be, help we're growers first, and not just first. have the same shit everyone else has. Not have the same stuff. Give each of them a, n- a new chance. Like right. you give someone something that's guaranteed, a guaranteed cut, especially For give sure. someone beans is cool. It takes a long time to find. Yeah. But you give them a something. guaranteed, give them a guaranteed cut. And you know, it's like a certain amount of people and they could all be from different places. Like you're the, right. the club has people in t- all Everywhere. different states. Yeah. So it's like, they could be one of three people that might Canadians. have that, that cut. Yeah. It's, it's pretty wild. Puerto Rico. I sent a bunch of, my, I, I've only ever given my seeds away. And, uh, you know, there's some people in, in the UK that are, like, popping old lemming seeds. That's and they're sick. finding hitters. Oh, I bet. Are you kidding like, me? Like, this guy, Gray Man, and can't help you. And they're, like, sending me stuff. They're, like, we want to put this in competitions. I'm, like, dude, those are my ugliest seeds that I had. Like, like, like not not the ones I sent them, but, like, the that cross. Why? Like, just whiter, I don't know. They're, they're not all white, striped? White, green, small, preemie. You don't just, think that has anything to do with, the, everybody. with the runts, crossing it to the runts or something? I'm, I think it could have. I mean that that plant definitely wasn't like that's why and that's why What's I thought the chauffeur like, would be a good one because the chauffeur is like such a beefy, yeah, vigorous plant. And the thing I liked about it, like we were cutting back, is that it smelled like one thing, smelled like like cakey gym socks. And you smoke it, and it's like got the berries and like you know that skittles yeah. undertone. And like I like that shit. Yeah, it's hard to sell. It's hard to sell people on on an experience and not just sell of them the on chauffeur. The bag. You're yeah, saying? yeah, yeah. Well, especially like in the splash, like it's just got such a creamy, yeah, fucking berry it's, gas yeah, like to it. Little, like blueberry candy, lip smacker gloss. Like, yeah, yeah. And God damn, is she gorgeous? Like, I'm just doing stunning. some. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do something for production. She's actually, like that yeah. fucking chick that was in the gym this morning doing the kipping pull-ups <laughs> that I was just like. <laughs> Oh my god, this chick is a fucking beast. Like I can't even fucking do one kip toe touch and this <laughs> this woman just traveled from fucking Atlanta. It's her birthday. She was wine tasting yesterday and she's just like looks like she's ready for a fucking CrossFit competition. <laughs> I, I just I have a splash going right now for the first time since we even gave uh put those put those cuts out and it's like dude it's like it's an amazing I'm doing it under HPS and it's it's so dense like it looks like it's under it throws LED. down yeah. hard too it's just like chugging it just wants to explode you're doing that at the facility yeah so we're gonna i'm gonna see how it's how it tests how it sells see if people like it because that one's a tough one because the first time i ran it there uh i got color out of it but then like it seems like a lot of people that were doing led were having maybe a little more difficulty getting the color it's they, more they it was, the under canopies. It was more of like, like a time, uh, silverish, yeah. bluish, purple, purple tint. Like little, what I yeah, like the, the pink kisses of color. Yeah. Right, right. And that's not enough. And then like, it dries out. Some people like don't those, want the pinks dry up. They don't yeah. unless it's like you know Tropicana or some other shit. Like those pinks don't really last either. You know, yeah. those, the perp the purple it had dried out of, but it was like a bluish silver. You know. Yeah. And the, that I mean, I just love the taste of it. So hopefully we can keep coming up with enough stuff that has color while we transition, get people back on. Board was there anything the else? Was there was there anything else that you liked or that you test flower to plant or anything else that you're like, oh, I, I like kind of like this or not really? Um, out of out of those the stuff ones? that I gave you, yeah. Uh, well, I only flowered out because I. Like I was so worried that something was gonna like I didn't want anyone to touch any of those plants <laughs> he gave me. So I just like as soon as I got the stuff to make the crosses, I backed them up. I thought about maybe asking you to run stuff, but I was like, you know what, better safe than sorry. And I just like murked everything. Anything <laughs> though that stood out like in like uh, that first. Um, I'm very excited about the um, the the G41 Kush 
uh, mint crossed to the candy apple. Yeah. I have that one going right now, just as a just as a like getting ready to flip, probably tonight or tomorrow. Uh, but like the stem rub alone on it is outrageous. Super fire. Yeah. Just like just, it's already there's a couple of them that are already just caramel. They and same be thing. Haters. And then I and uh, I'm like week five in some of the caramel cutthroat candies. Oh wow! And those are like. <laughs> All over the place. Those are gonna be fire. And then I got this um, uh, Obama to the DJ Short Blueberry or whatever. So Come that, on, that tell me something about that. that are you one's kidding crazy. me? Crazy. Some of them are like full mutants, and some of them are just incredible. What about like the like, blueberry candy turp? Are you yeah, getting it's that outrageous. throughout it? It's outrageous. <laughs> oh, there's one of them that looks like a little Kush plant. And there's uh, like a couple of them. They're just all over the place. It's outrageous. Wow. Uh, it's like it's a little too early to tell. That's but gonna I still be go in crazy. There. Every week I'm like just trying to find a different <laughs> nug to do. Dude, that should be. We should of. we somewhere out of that we're gonna have a hardcore candy blueberry. Yeah, I mean, and and I think it's a good time to like and the, the blueberries that I've ever done. I mean, that was one of the first weeds I remember yeah. in the '90s as a teenager smoking. It was either it was either swag or it was dank, and then if then eventually they had names, right? And there was like Alaskan Thunderfuck, AK forty seven, Blueberry. Blueberry was always like for the sure. One. Because dude, come on, a bag of weed that yeah smells like blueberries when you open it. Like yeah. who doesn't want to smoke some blueberries? Exactly, I love that. Like one of my other favorite things is coffee, and like when you get some coffee that tastes like something different. I got this one coffee, and the guy's like, dude, it tastes like Earl Grey blueberry tea, and I was like, no way. I drank it. it yeah, like when you go to a new heady coffee friend, place like, and you're just like, oh, dude, this coffee tastes yeah. good. Like, those are my, that's those a great my favorite feeling. things. Coffee talk actually got me to where to meeting you somehow weirdly from Uncle, Uncle John. John. Yeah, because we would just hang out and talk about coffee. And, and I just terps. met him recently. Hmm? I had known really oh, Uncle really? John you before that. Like him? when I met you was just recently after I met. Uncle John. He was like, you got to meet Lance. He's like, you, you'd like Lance. Lance would appreciate what you're going on because I would just be raving about like, I'm like, man, I don't give a fuck about potency. Fuck these stupid assholes. Like they're ruining everything. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it's just got to like, it's just got to taste good. Like whether the terpene sets high or whatever, like there's got to be something else that, that tastes good. Like that's what I'm going to breed for. Everything like at the time I was like hitting people up and be like, you got any throwaways that you like can't, that can't meet your rec market production criteria. criteria. Like you got any 14 percenters that just kill every single grower had one that are like, I just can't get, I just can't I pull, pull myself to throw this away. Cause it's so incredible. Right. It's like everyone's favorite, but it only hits 14%. I was like, that's the one I want. Right. Hit me up with those. Like if I, if I need to go like to battle against like full force against it and do my anti brand. That's what the, the whole joke behind the uncle dad was. It's like right. the week it's going to be weak for someone like me who wants to smoke a whole joint without being like stuck. That's why it's uncle and dad. And it's like vibes it's like, kinda, like, older. like cheesy. Like it, it even started off like my, my Honda fit was the original uncle dad because it's like, it's like, Oh, I bought like an efficient little Got gas it. car. And my brother and I would always joke about that. And then we started talking about our weed tolerance and how we missed just like being able to like smoke a fucking whole joint and, not worry about. I mean, I think part some of it comes as getting older and having more responsibilities. Yeah. But like, just like I just want to smoke some weed that makes me giggle, watch a movie, eat a snack, right? Like, just tastes so good all the way through. That's my biggest tester now. Is like if I if I smoke a joint, like I smoke a lot of different weed. I take I take two hits of a lot of different weed. But if I if I smoke something and I can't stop smoking and I smoke it all the way down, no matter what's gonna happen, like that's that's my winner. It's fucking sick. Like if it's it's got to be, I uh, then there haven't been that many that have been that exciting for what, me as I smoke them. What's the what? Where did the noodle man come from? What is the noodle man? <laughs> uh, the noodle man. I was talking to my buddy that is from the same. This is a hat. Because people <laughs> ask me, let's let's go over this. There's a little patch. Oh, no. Oh, you, you, the hat. The that's logo. The hat. Yeah. Is that the hat? Uh, or my no? buddy uh, Theo. He goes by Truck Zero on Instagram. He's from my same hippie cult town in Iowa. Uh, he's always been an incredible artist, and he was doing a lot of really cool work. And I was like, "Hey, dude, I was I, I want to come up like work on some concepts." Some originally, I was like, "Oh, we're gonna do different packages with different art for different releases and all stuff." And uh, we were talking about this, and I think I was like, "I just want some sort of like yacht yacht lord kind of like fun oceany." Wavy gravy. I just sent him a bunch of weird random yeah. things off uh, the top of my head, and he like 
got it perfectly. He sent a few different things, and this guy was like, just stuck out hard for me because it looks like it's kind of you, nobody knows what it is. Kind of looks like a little like clam with sunglasses. That's what I thought. And it had a hat. Some this people is think it's an wet, octopus. Water. I mean, really, it's like it's a little bit of like my. Uh, my oh. brain is a little bit out there and a little noodly sometimes. So Leaves it up to your imagination. So I start like, yeah, referring to my brain as like the noodle man when I start doing, ir- you know, nice weird, <laughs> impulsive, like irrational it. things. Um, Amazing. Yeah, and it's just stuck out. Like people really enjoy it. It's like nobody knows cool. what it is. You can wear it around. It's open like, for interpretation. Yeah, it's open for interpretation. It's like it's something interesting. I've had people like ask them what, what it is randomly. It's like. As a conversation starter, right. I can I can wear it to pick my kids up from school or drop them off. Like I've always loved brands that I can wear and not necessarily be just like right. blasting weed. Right. You know, I, I've worn, uh, you know, I've worn all of our stuff. Like I've worn Preferred Gardens coaching soccer. I've worn Dank Mob full shit coaching soccer. <laughs> I've worn the Noodle Man. Like, because you can, they don't for know. Sure. Yeah, for so, sure. Um, That's awesome. It's like. The parents already look at me a little funny, so it's like I'm just like I can't let them know too much. For sure, not that they, they not that they should care. It's the same as like brewing beer; it's a better, less harmful. Well, dude, I'm super excited to share some of this new creations and all these new things we've done with our with our social club, and we're gonna get another event coming up here in February, and so we'll. I think by that time, gonna, uh, I think by February, and then and then another one in April, right? We're gonna do we'll do, do February, April. April's going to be big. That'll be a really big event that's going to be fucking By both of those, I'm, for both of those, I'm kind of already hunting. I'm like uh, hunting, let's see, probably 12 different things, uh, multiples of each Amazing. right now. And, I think um, we should also fucking get the dolomite out. Like the do- I think the dolomite needs to come back. dolomite, well, I didn't think the dolomite left. The... <laughs> Dolomite is just so frosty, so fucking colorful, so grape ferment, pineapple. Like, it did great numbers for me. I did two pounds of light on it. I, could, I couldn't believe you got, yeah, I, I didn't get those numbers on it, but like the frost was But it was undeniable. crazy stacked. Like, in my, like, I didn't have to clean too much off the bottom. It was just like that fucking golf ball. My shit at the top was smaller, smaller than, the than the ones. That's one of those ones you gotta tell people. You're like, hey, don't do any leg leg work on this. Don't build. Don't prune up in the inside. And like you don't have to push your go. fucking light penetration. That's and, all your weight's be- gonna be exactly. on the third. Yeah. You don't have to beat the top of your canopy with light and try to grow hogs. And I and I love that one because because it was like an anytime all day smoker. All day smoker. The I'm bags. Wuss, the you know? bag looks amazing. Bag. It's got I mean, that, that 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 round. I forget what event was happening here but when i brought you the first of the uh the oh, that lemmings was that? two and the pineapple dolomite and you're like what was that event was Some it at the fairgrounds was it emerald cup last year was it an emerald cup no because i thought there were boosts we were walking around looking at oh that was hall of flowers yeah 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 it's hall of flowers because i made a quick you were like, I gone. got out of there so fast. We got there and, I, and you're like, I'm leaving. I'm like, uh, what? Yeah. I did like, like 15 through, minutes. And then I was away. like, Ooh. we walked in like, and you were like, dude, I'm out of here. I hate everything about those things. Like, that was just, tough. yeah. <laughs> because that's even different because that's like all industry heads and it's like all day long. They're trying to sell their shit. Yeah. But it's like, it's all the, the people that, the industry people that you know and you like, but then you're surrounded by this weird, For like sure. fake cardboard cutout amusement park of like trying weird to sell whatever they're selling. Shit of people that have these companies, they don't even know what it is. Yeah. I'm like, what's this booth? It's a picture of like people <laughs> sitting by a bonfire and there's like right. a beach ball. Like, what, it's what are you guys li- sell it's here? It's a lifestyle booth. Yeah, they, it's a lifestyle booth. They bought weed from the booth next door and put it in their brand. Yeah, it's for people you know? who are still trying to like cut out and create the, whatever sure. lifestyle they think is going to make them a human. And I, I just agree. don't, uh, I agree. Those people make me nervous. Well, bro, thank you so much for coming <laughs> in and doing the podcast and, and speaking with me and, and sharing a little bit of your history and, and what makes you tick the way that you do, bro. I love you. Let's smoke some motherfucking weed. Let's go look let's at some grow it. rooms and let's get some food. Love you, buddy. Thank you. Love you too. Appreciate thank you for it. everything you do for me and all of our fucking, our, our tribe. Basically, our tribe of fucking growers who are making it in 
these wild times. Yeah, That's I what think, it's about. Hey, thank you. I think it's important that we all stick together. Some sh- of us are down to fight and keep fighting and never going to stop. And some people are bowed out. And I feel bad for those, those people. But I, th- I still believe we got this. thousand percent. And thank you to our sponsor, Dank Mob. Look out for a Dank Mob on a corner street near you. <laughs> <laughs> Dank Mob, the best exotic boutique fucking flower you can find in a bag on Telegram at Dank underscore Mob, Instagram at Dank Mob. Much love. Cut the check. We're out.